one question that comes up again and again is taking a small logo and scaling it up to a much larger size. Very seldom does it work successfully. So sometimes you've just got to rebuild the whole thing. And I'll look at this, the Gimpuser Group logo. And how do I get that into my computer? Well, I'm going to zoom it up a bit. And now I'm going to make a screenshot of it. You can use the print screen in Windows to do this. I've got a Linux machine here that's got a snapshot function. Next, we need this little program, Potrace, and it's from SourceForge. If you do a search, you'll find, find it no problem. And it does what it says. It transforms bitmaps into vector graphics. You could use Inkscape for this. Inkscape uses a, an enhanced, very much tweaked portrace. But for what I want, a simple outline, this actually works a little bit better and a lot faster. If you use Linux, well, you can get that or use the one that's in your repo. Windows users can get a, a zip file. And for Windows users, there's the little zip file. Now then, make yourself a project folder. Don't try and work from my documents or my pictures or my anything. Make something that you can easily find. And we'll see in a minute why you need to be able to find it easily. Because I'm going to open that zip and it's got a, its own little folder inside the zip. So I'll open that, select them all and I'll drag them into my project folder. Those are the files we have. Close that down. And I'm going to start up a command window. Uh, pull traces command line. But it's not difficult. Uh, you need to cd dot dot a couple of times to get back to C. And then you need to cd to your project folder. There we are. And that's what's inside. The files we've just copied into it. Now then, to make sure that Potrace is working, type Potrace. It does need a command. And that's it. Now then, back to GIMP. And this is in GIMP 2.8. But 2.6 is just the same. And I'm going to crop that fairly close to the letters, but not right up to them. Now I'm going to do a little bit of pre-processing. I'm going to give it a standard Gaussian blur. And then I'm going to use the sharpen filter on it. Right up at 90, 91. And that's just to give Potrace an edge to work to. Now I'm going to save this in my project folder as a bitmap image. Potrace doesn't support that many formats, so bitmap's OK. And that's it in the project folder. Now the bit that people hate and that's command line. This is Linux but exactly the same in Windows as we saw before and we're going to change to the project folder. Make a listing and there we are and you can see in the project folder I've got my bitmap file, PMP file that we've just made. Now then the command is 
pull trace dash s for svg dash o for an output file then the name of the output file which i'm going to call gug svg yes and then the input file which is gug.bmp hit the enter key and it works almost straight away if i make a listing we got that and you can see we now have a new file here, GUGSVG. And just to recap, that is the command we used, pull trace, dash s, dash o, name of output file, name of input file. Back to GIMP. And I'm going to make a new large image. Uh, this is A4. That's the largest that my printer can support. And really, whatever you do, just to remind you, make a new layer. It's easier to delete a, a layer than to start all over again. Now then, in the Paths tab, there's our Paths tab. It's empty. And I'm going to import that little path that we just made, the SVG file. Open that and we get a, a lot of paths. You can make them visible like that or an easier way is hold the shift key down, one click and you get everything. Might be the bits we don't need, you can unhide some of them. But it looks like I need everything here so I'm going to merge Visible paths. That's everything in one path now. What can we do with this? Well, we can move it for a start. Looking in the properties, make sure we're working with paths here. Make sure you're on this little path icon with any of the tools that you're using. Such as scale tool or rotate tool. You have to set each one when you use them. So now we can... There it is, that's the path, just to show you. Now we can do a little bit of simple editing. And on the Paths tool, make sure we're on Edit. And if we click on the path, we get this effect. These are called nodes. The little circles are where the paths change direction or control the shape of the path. And you can see we can do a little bit of simple editing here if we want to. What I really want to do is get rid of that box around the, the name. So holding the shift and control key down, I'm going to start clicking. Remember, it's shift and control and click. Shift, control, click. Just keep it down. Work your way around. And that'll delete that path. Now then, what can we do with this? I'm going to uh, scale it up because I'm on a wanted to fill my paper, at least the width of the paper. Again, remember, you need to be on that Paths option. So there's the Scale dialog. I'll make this smaller so I can see what I'm doing. And just juggle around with the Scale tool until you're finished. And there we are, that's A4 size. There you go, still haven't anything other than a path. But we can convert the path to a selection with that button there, that icon. And if we make a some sort of a nice colour, then I can fill it. 
what else could I do? I can stroke the selection or I can stroke the path. The path is still active, so I'll stroke the path. Turn the selection off. Turn the path off. We'll zoom in and you can see we've got a nice clean outline. No pixelation, no jaggies, large size. That's the original and we'd have a job getting that original to anything like that size. So that's uh, enlarging using paths.